A few days have passed since the incident at the clock tower. K Hospital is surprisingly empty for midday. Forgive the expression, but the place is basically dead. From the other side of the hallway, a familiar looking man is approaching me. Next to him is a small girl. Hello, Mr. Light. Are you also here to visit Daimo, Nate, huh? Yeah, pretty much. She asked me to come with her. Good afternoon. This girl is Suzu Moriyam Morimiya. She's but a grade schooler. She's also one of the mark bearers. After her previous case, she's come to idolize Ada and treat him as her older brother. Ada, why are you taking Suzu here on a weekday afternoon? Hold on, I gotta take my headset off. Okay, you might have heard me fumbling with it, but for some reason the volume spiked. She's not skipping school, alright? Today is her school's anniversary. I heard the situation from Ada. Mr. Diamond's still asleep because of a spirit's curse, isn't he? Most likely. No way. Her eyes are filled with deep sorrow. Don't you worry, Suzu. Mr. Light and I will definitely save Mr. Daimon, alright? Ata probably taps his chest while making that claim. I have no idea where that confidence comes from. Despite my skepticism, the display brings a smile back to Suzu's face. Ata, mister, can I trust you two? <laughs> uh, of course. Thank you, mister. Anyway, Mr. Light, I'll continue to back you up on your investigation. Ata, about that. Oops, let's save that for later. I've got to get Suzu back home. I'll go to Kujo Mansion after that. Call me if you need anything. See you later, mister. Ata and Suzu leave after that. Crap, that was my chance to tell them. Following Slipmouth Kashima's case, I told Moe and Sho to stay out of the investigation. But Ata wasn't around, so I haven't told him yet. Suzu's been added to the character file. I finish my visit with Daimon and leave the hospital. He's still comatose, showing no signs of leaving Limbo and rejoining the ranks of the Consciousness. Are the Conscious... What was it? Uh, of the Conscious. The doctors have yet to identify the root cause of his coma. If it's truly the Departed's curse that is behind his condition, he won't pull out of this so long as the Departed still exists. I drive my car to Konohara Academy. A new notice hasn't been discovered yet. But Mr. Konohara asked me to teach a class this afternoon. I enter the classroom and take my place in front of the students. Then I proceed with the class like usual. When Kone first asked me to teach as part of my investigation, I thought it would be an absolute disaster, but surprisingly I'm doing just fine. On the other hand, the students seem to be doing markedly less fine. The number of fidgeting students that can't focus on class is too large to ignore. Considering some of them also ask me about my investigation, it's obvious what's on their minds. The Departed isn't just a fringe rumor anymore. These students have gone from being amused to being terrified. The human heart is a fragile thing. Seeing those kids with their flagging spirits, I know I need to hurry up and close this case. In what feels like the blink of an eye, class is over. The first time I taught it, it felt like time stood still. It's kind of troubling to realize I've now been at it long enough that I'm used to it. After school, I start my investigation solo. I think back to my conversation with Doryu and Michio the other day. The Departed might be someone close to me. In order to narrow it down, I make the rounds, asking teachers and students alike about the people involved in the incident. However, my efforts are fruitless, and all I get is a lot of small talk and wasted effort. I attempt to take a different angle to figure out the Departed's true identity and think it over. The Departed is good at hiding. Let's say you're able to take the place of someone else. And when they do, they can perfectly duplicate that person's looks, memories, and personality. It'd be the perfect disguise. Nobody could see through that. 
With that level of deception, the only real chance to know their true identity would probably be once they've achieved their goal, which will likely be when they exchange vows with their dear husband. And for me, that would either be death or a fate worse than that. Finally, somebody has the same view of marriage as me. So I have to find the answer before then. I glance up and notice that it's already dark out. It's time for the students to leave school. I'm not getting anywhere by blindly hunting for clues. I better go to the infirmary and put together a real plan of action. I find a woman in a white coat waiting inside the infirmary. I knew it was a matter of time before she appeared. For a moment I think she's a school nurse, but then I see her face. Hey, you have your clothes on for once. Hello, Light. I never would imagine you'd be a teacher here. I was really shocked when I heard the news from Daimon. Hero, why are you here? To help you out with the investigation, what else would I be doing here? Never would imagine I'd hear the word help come out of Hero's mouth. There's gotta be a reason. She is Madoka Hero. She wears a white coat, but not because she's a doctor. Hero's a mark bearer who works at a pharma company as a researcher. If I remember correctly, you don't handle paranormal phenomena all that well. Well, true. I mean, after all the suffering I was put through before, how could I be expected to like it? So why are you here, then? Jeez, you're so annoying. I have my own reasons, alright? She is rather intelligent, but Hiro also has quite the cowardly streak. However, there are times when her curiosity gets the better of her and she ends up poking her nose into bizarre incidents. Call it a test of courage, I suppose. Ask why she's here. To tell you the truth, I'm here because Daimon asked. In the event that something were to happen to him, he asked that I come help you in his stead. Hence, I'm here, using up my paid leave. I appreciate you taking your obligation to Daimon seriously, but... This case is extremely dangerous. There have been a lot of casualties already. Come now, don't patronize me. I'm fully aware of the dangers present. Then why are you... Because I want to save Daimon, simple as that. They're my friends, too, not just yours. Why would there be ambiguous gender there? It should be he's my friend. Daimon apprised me of the situation. A spirit known as the Departed issues notices targeting people and then has other spirits kill them, correct? Yeah, and it's been pretty successful. We have a number of victims already. That spirit seems to have some human tendencies, eh? They behave a bit like a serial killer. The Departed is different from any other spirit I've encountered so far. They're cunning, and they possess the ability to pass themselves off as a human and hide within the school. I've also heard they're obsessed with you, no? You sure have a strong connection with spirits, Light. I guess so. I wonder if that's just another aspect of my lineage, like the way I seem to be able to see paranormal phenomena that others can't. Well then, shall we proceed with the investigation? Wait a minute, Hero. I'm going to investigate alone. I don't want to get you involved in this. Say what? You're just going to disregard my feelings? I don't get a say in the matter? Hero. Didn't you understand what I told you before? You aren't the only one who feels frustrated about what happened to Daimon. So you better ditch that weird I'm the only one who can carry this burden, I'll sacrifice myself mindset. It really gets on my nerves. But... I'll just take matters into my own hands if you keep insisting I stay out of this. Just give it up. A triumphant smile brightens her features. I don't think I'm going to win a war of wits against her. Moving on to your investigation. I've heard there's no new notice yet. As of this moment, that is correct. I have a feeling one will arrive soon, though. Let's go check the faculty room. You have a sixth sense or something? I guess you can call it that. I like to think that's my sense of humor, but people disagree. I have a feeling the Departed wants me, their dear husband, to continue pursuing this case. If my hunch is right, that means they'll be more likely to issue a notice while I'm here at school. Madoka has joined the crew. So she seems a lot more assertive than she was back in the zoo case. Bag enhancement. So there's still eight for up for grabs. No one here.
and down here. When I get to the room, one of the teachers informs me that Mr. Konoe is away at the moment. Which unfortunately means I'm going to have to ask Sakamoto. Goodness gracious, you again? Sakamoto's cold tone of voice makes it apparent that she finds this meeting just as unfortunate as I. What's your business here? I have work to do. Has a new notice from the departed arrived? Notice? Oh, now that you mention it, I did get a report of something like that earlier. What about it? What are you being so nonchalant for? Why didn't you tell me sooner? I believe I made a position quite clear. I find this investigation of yours to be, at best, a pointless waste of time. Sakamoto shoots a withering glare in my direction, looking like she just swallowed a bug. She's usually pretty open about her dislike of me, but she's taking it to another level today. I got a report from the door manager the other day. She informed me that you took Doryo and Kinukawa out and made them violate their curfew. The headmaster might have ordered me to let your absurd behavior slide. But this is unacceptable. So that's why she's being particularly hostile toward me today. I didn't make those girls break curfew, but I can see how it's skewed that way in Sakamoto's mind, and I doubt my explanation would change much. Those notices are pranks. It's mere coincidence that the students disappear when the notices were issued. The departed, ghosts, the supernatural, it's all a bunch of ludicrous nonsense. To think a man like you has sullied the good name of teachers just to investigate this rubbish. Sakamoto's practically got steam coming out of her ears. Wonder what I can do to calm her down. Just smack her upside the head. Trying to convince art and non-believers of the supernatural can only make both sides frustrated. It's a waste of energy to try. Let's just get what I need and get out of here. Where's the new notice? I don't have it with me. I told the student who picked it up to throw it away. You told them to do what now? Which suit was it? Kakuta from the disciplinary committee. He found it while patrolling the school. He was the big dude at the top of the stairs way back when, if you don't remember. What does he look like? He's a strapping, well-built bo well boy. He's in the karate club. Oh my, look at the time. I have to go now. I have a meeting. Before I can even protest, Sakamoto's already left the room. Other teachers are following suit. Well, she's clearly not a fan of yours, Light. Though you pretty much earned that treatment for hitting on high school students. That's not what happened. Stop making things weird. Looks like we're going to have to put in some effort to find this Kakuta boy. I mean, we might stumble upon him simply by stopping to talk to each stout student we see on the way. But it'd be nice if we had a bit more information to go on. More information. Doryu or Michio might know him. Sakamoto's obviously going to be keeping a close eye on my contact with those two, but I can't let that interfere with my work. So yes, we saw the uh, beginning of Chapter 2. I did talk to him. As I mentioned, I believe he was on the third floor. Doryu is organizing documents in the student council room. Oh, Mr. Light. Thank you again for your help. Sorry, but I'm in a hurry. Do you know Kakuta? I heard he's a big guy from the disciplinary committee. I know him. He's in 2C. How about you try looking for him in his classroom? Got it. Thanks. No one here. Uh, so I'm a little worried about is there being something missable here. Hey, want to go home together? Sun's almost set. Why me? So you don't care if I get killed by the departed on my way home? That's not what I said. Let's go home together, then. Fine, what a pain. Two people who look like siblings leave the classroom. Just real quick. She has a calculator for plus two intelligence. She has me beaten dexterity and intelligence, but I have her beaten the other stats. She always looks a little psycho to me, and I don't know if anyone else feels the same way.
Large bulletin board, first notice posted, there's some red marks. This red thing looks like mold. Do you mind if I collect it and analyze it? Go outside and continue the investigation in other places. School's getting strange these days. I know, right? It smells musty here. Is it because of the departed? I've heard there's an outbreak of mold somewhere in the school. Yikes, just imagining that makes my skin itchy. Anyway, let's go home. Yeah. The couple leave the area. Cool. Notices for students are posted on the bulletin board. Club activity is halted, head home as soon as class is over. Spirits only appear at night, so we'd be fine during the day. Guess you can never be too careful. Female restroom. Hero, can you inspect this area? Alright, wait a second. Just the usual smoking students, nothing more. Looked inside, but there doesn't seem to be anything out of the ordinary. This door leads to the male restroom. I'll go inspect this place, wait here. Take your time. Two hours later. I didn't find anything in particular. She runs real weird, too. I don't sense anyone's presence. I have no business in the corridor now. Crumpled paper. Off limits. Nothing concerning. Nothing concerning. Saw a big guy going to the back of the hallway earlier. It's probably Kakuta from the second year. I wonder what he's up to. Crap, so he's on this floor. Hello there. Caught a painted lady in the courtyard earlier. Want to watch some butterflies together? Sorry, but I'm in a hurry now. Do you know Kakuta? I heard he's a big guy from the disciplinary committee. I saw him going to the third floor just now. What business do you have with that karate guy, though? Is he the, the new nose targeting the karate kid or something? I don't know yet, but thanks for the info. Curtains, no comment. Are we the only ones left in the school? Nope, I think the student council members are still here. Damn, they sure like to stay late despite all the rumors. I don't really fear the departed since I know you're going to protect me. The heck are you talking about? I'm totally not saving you. I'm just not good with ghosts and stuff. Anyway, I'm gonna go home now. What? Me too! The female students take the stairs down. Well, the good news is we're making great time going through here. Find door leading to the emergency exit, no comment.
Actually, I think we went into this room because I went back to talk to the guy, right? That's him. There's a big Wilbur guy standing over there. He looks pretty strapping. Are you Kakuta? Who's? Yeah, named Shinichi Kakuta. Where's the departed's notice? I'm hoping you haven't thrown it away already. No, I still have it. Miss Sakamoto told me to trash it, but I feel like I should show it to you since you're investigating them. Thanks a lot. You should thank Doryo and Kinukawa. They've been asking everyone to pitch in and help you out. He pulls out the departed's nose and hands it to me. If that's it, I'll be heading to my classroom. Feel free to come by 2C if you still need anything. I'll be at school for a while. Kakuta then walks off. I quickly scan the new notice. It has all the hallmarks of the previous notices, an accordion folded paper with, an, with eerie handprints on it. So this one I know looks like, eh? It's really giving off the horror vibes. Hurry up and check it out. Come on. Dear Hooligan, Kokiri will kill you tonight. I'm watching Hide in the School, your beloved the departed. Uh-oh, they're coming for me. The next victim is Hooligan, and the spirit is Kokiri? So by Hooligan, they mean those boorish thug types, right? Hey. Yeah, so fu... So I think we should try and gather information that would lead us to the identity of those two things. Asking the remaining students would probably be more fruitful than asking the teachers. The faculty doesn't seem so cooperative. Yeah, and the... Maybe the student council girl will tell you. I mean, she actually appears to be trying to help you. Also, I'd like to hear more from the Kakuta kid. Yeah. What's with you? Yeah, come on. Give me more to work with than that. This is your operation here. Don't make me handle everything alone. Okay... As much as I want to point out that she's cut me off every time I try to speak, I hold my tongue. Besides, Hero's plan of attack is basically what I've suggested. We better start asking her about Hooligan and Kokiri. So, somewhere along the line, we became married. That's right, we've already encountered that fate worse than death. about time to leave school. Gotta prove the departed won't appear even if I stay here alone. Hanako this, Kokiri that. The people in the school are wacky. Can you please ghosts and demons exist? Looking close to the male student's legs are obviously trembling. Did you find Kakuda? Yes, thank you. I'm happy that I could help. So what do you want to talk about? Actually, we found a new notice. So another one's finally here, huh? Show me. I show Michio the Departed's notice. So the next spirit is Kokiri. Well, Kokiri usually refers to that old fortune teller technique, but I'm sure you already know about that, right? I do not. Let me explain it to you then. Kokiri is a fortune telling technique that uses a coin and a piece of paper. You summon a spirit named Kokiri and ask them some questions. It can be dangerous since you're dealing with a spirit, after all. There are some people who get a big scare out of it. But the Kokiri mentioned in the notice is a ghost, not the fortune-telling technique. So Kokiri is both the name of the technique and the summon spirit, and the rumor is referring to the spirit. So real quick, if you are not familiar with Kokiri, but you've played The World Ends With You, Reaper Creeper is referring to Kokiri. And if you want to see it, like I do have The World Ends With You Neo on the chat, or not Neo, it's just the remix on the chapter, uh, on the channel, so you can check it out there if you wanted to see. Can you tell me more about it, Michio? Sure, why not? That reminds me, Hime and I were called by Miss Sakamoto this afternoon. Do you know what she said? Don't get too close to Mr. Light, he doesn't belong here. Okay. Sorry, I shouldn't have talked to you. She's probably gonna give you a lecture. Don't worry about it. 
You're my lifesaver and you're hunting down the departed like I am. So, about the Kokiri in the notice. I have a feeling it might be referring to Mr. Kokiri. There is a rumor like that at Konohara Academy. So, Old Man Kokiri is what they kind of said, or Uncle Kokiri would be a way to interpret it. But Chapter 5, Mr. Kokiri. Have you ever gone to the corridor on the second floor? Of course not, that place is restricted. Do you know why? It's because of the Kokiri Shrine. That place is cursed. I'm not lying, it's the truth. I've even heard stories about it. One rainy day, some delinquents were hanging out on the second floor corridor. They were kind of notorious. They were getting in fights on a daily basis. There were even rumors that they were into drugs. Guess they must have been bored. So they were messing around with the shrine as a dare, all, the la all laughing with their stupid faces. They were kicking the shrine and scribbling on it all sorts of things. One of them even put out a cigarette on it. The wind and rain got stronger. The delinquents were about to head back inside. At that moment, they heard a voice mixed with the wind. Kill Hooligan. They turned toward the old shrine, the source of the voice, figuring someone must have been playing a prank on them. Except they were the only ones in the corridor. Obviously, they thought they were just imagining things. Those delinquents looked at each other and ran away from the corridor as fast as they could. But that night... One of the delinquents, the one who snuffed out his cigarette on the shrine, felt a pain in his ear. He felt a strange sensation when he touched his ear. It was dry and rough. It was weird, like there was something in his ear. Terrified, he went to go check himself in the mirror. Mushrooms were growing from his ear. Folded cat mushrooms that looked like maitake. The mushrooms continued to spread. From his ear to his neck, his cheeks, then his chin. The delinquent shrieked, and then... He called an ambulance. He got himself checked at the hospital. They found no trace of mushrooms, but his ear had a really bad infection. The skin was rotting away, so they had to cut his ear off. When a teacher heard the story, they said it's the curse of Kokiri Shrine. That voice must have been Mr. Kokiri's, and that was his work. The rumors say Mr. Kokiri is the apparition of a priest who haunts the shrine. That's right, folks, we have our first male ghost of the game. And that was the rumor about Mr. Kokiri. So please stay away from the shrine in the second floor corridor. If you're cursed by the mushrooms, your lovely face will be ruined. Is Mr. Kokiri the name of the shrine? Correct. It's called Mr. Kokiri because the shrine has a mysterious voice. No one knows what Mr. Kokiri looks like as they've only heard his voice. Creepy, isn't it? Hooligan? I can't think of anyone. Maybe Izumi, I guess, but he's dead already. By the way, Mr. Light, I've never seen the person beside you. Is she a doctor like Mr. Daimon? I'm a researcher, not a doctor, though I also do deal with the health of living beings as part of my job. I see, an idol and a female scientist, huh? You sure have some amazing and gorgeous assistants. By the way, which one do you prefer? They're both dependable in their own ways. I has the stamina, Hero has the intelligence. That's not what I mean. Oh well, it was stupid of me to expect something. You two sure are close. This girl might be the departed, you know? Shush, Hero. I don't mind as long as Mr. Light trusts me. Sorry, it's a joke. I'm kind of on edge since we don't have any idea who the departed might be. I don't mind, in this kind of situation it's natural to have some suspicion. I miss my normal school life. Hey, Light? Shouldn't we be able to pretty much guess who Hooligan may be? 
based on what Michio told me about Mr. Coker the Mr. Kokery rumors. I agree with you there, but I still have no clue who it might be. The rumor said a delinquent suit was cursed by the shrine in the second floor corridor. Why don't we go take a look there? Wait, are you serious? Aren't you being too cavalier here? We're going to be stepping into some deep shit if we approach that shrine. I'm not doing it for entertainment, it's for the investigation. You can stay here if you don't want to go. I never said I didn't want to go. I just wondered if there was a better way to do this. That's it. I swear I'm not scared at all. Or, she didn't say I swear, she just, I'm not scared at all. Then to find out who a delinquent is, the best person to talk to would be someone on the disciplinary committee. So yeah, I took a break before playing this part, and I don't remember if there's anything else I need to do. I'll try talking to, uh... Michiho here real quick. Nope. The shrine where people supposedly heard Mr. Kukri's voice should be right ahead. Looks like the door is unlocked. Let's check the place out. Man, is it just me or is there a lot of cigarette butts out here? Door is locked, tightly shut, I can't enter the old building from here. Do you know what the big straw rope in front of this door is? I have a feeling it's telling us not to enter, like in a spiritual sense. I'm getting goosebumps. Eh, I'll take your word for it. Attend ostentatious ostentatiously styled girl is absent mindedly lingering near the statue the shrine. So yeah, they chose the biggest adverbs they could find there, I bet. Hello there. Uh... Yep, sounds like your average teenager these days. Someone needs their cell phone back. Her reply is unintelligible, more of a groan. Just ignore her, Light. Something's wrong with her. Like your average teenager. I kid, I kid. <laughs> An old shrine is standing here. This has got to be the shrine from the rumor about Mr. Kokiri. Let's take a closer look. The first thing that stands out is that it's a rather small shrine. It's completely weathered after being exposed to the elements for a long period of time. Another noticeable feature is the number of talismans on it. The image on the talismans looks kind of like a centipede. There's a small gap in the shrine door. It's too dark to tell what's inside, though. We need to open the door first if we want to see what's inside. I reach toward the door to check what's inside. Uh... Old man. The female student next to me groans and slowly forces out some words. Don't do anything bad to the shrine. Old man, you're... Yotamurudana! A hooligan! Growling, the female student launches an attack. With a terrifying look in her eyes, the female student raises something resembling a baton. I see something that looks like mushrooms around her neck. 
Maybe she's possessed. I use my bag as a shield to try to deflect her attack. I block her attack with my bag. Great. The female student flinches for a moment. I should be able to restrain her now. However, she regains her balance before I can make my move. Then she swings her baton and launches another attack. I'm struggling so much just to repel her attacks all by myself. I want to make any progress. I need a different course of action. We tried to use my bag as a shield to block her attacks. So my line of thinking is we'll have one character block and the other try to restrain. We clutch the bag tightly and block our attack. The female student recoils. Grab her, hero. Okay. Calm down. Hero captures the student's arms from behind. Helping out, I immediately restrain her. The student lets out a yell and then goes quiet. This is the right choice. The student faints and the mushrooms on her neck instantly vanish. So it really was a spiritual phenomenon. Assuming the rest of the rumor is accurate, that would mean the mushrooms were the shrine's curse. Keep an eye on her, hero. I'll investigate the inside of the shrine. Sure thing. I walk toward the shrine and put my hand on the door. There's a talisman on it. Inside the shrine I find some bizarre stuff. A petri dish used for experiments. Inside the dish is a dead centipede. Some red substance appears to be growing from the centipede. What in the world is it? Oh, I see you found something interesting. Those red filaments are probably mushrooms. It's difficult to tell without the caps. Without me realizing it, Hero's already peering over my shoulder. Looks like those are mushroom hyphae growing out on uh, growing on the dead centipede. I think they're Ophidiocordyceps sinensis? sinensis. Very interesting. But what's it doing here? Old shrines aren't usually a place where you'd store lab equipment. What are you going to do with the petri dish? But you're going to keep it. I guess so, yeah. Pressed by Hero, whose eyes are sparkling with curiosity, I collect the petri dish. Why is it creepy? What are we going to do with her? It doesn't seem like she's going to regain consciousness anytime soon. Let's draw on her face. We can't just leave her here. Let's take her back to the infirmary. I hoist the female student onto my back and leave the corridor. From there I walk straight to the infirmary. The smell of cigarette smoke assaults my nose the moment I enter. Mashida's here? You're finally back! I've been waiting! Inside I see a sharp-eyed man tossing his cigarette into a portable ashtray. Mashita? The smell of cigarettes. Hey, no smoking inside the school. There are kids here. You're a terrible influence, you know. Where's your common sense, Mashita? Oh, is that how it is? Back in my day, the teachers would openly smoke in the faculty room. Well, times have changed. You need to be more considerate. What a pain. Anyway, who's that kid on your back? Let me lay her down first, then we can talk take turns drawing on her face. I put the unconscious girl down on the bed. She's totally out of it. Guess I'll just have to leave her here for the moment. 
Alright, can you give me the details now? Don't exactly expect to reunite with your friend and find him carrying an unconscious girl on their back. Fine, I've got some questions to ask, too. Satoru Mashita, a mark bearer and former detective who's now working as a private investigator. He's not really all that knowledgeable about spirits and paranormal phenomena. But after the events of our shared past, he often joins me when I'm on spirit-related cases. Never really expected to come to a place like this, even on an investigation. You mean a school that's still in session? Yeah. A place full of brats sounds like nothing but trouble to me. Hell, I got scolded just for having a freaking smoke. Sneaking into a band school is way easier. Let me just make one thing clear, Mashita. I'm begging you, please try not to attack any unwanted attention. No guarantees on that one, pal. I'm just gonna do things my own way. And if anyone's got a problem with that, they'll just have to deal with it. The corner of his mouth twitches into a mischievous grin. Mashi is a man who'll do anything for his investigation. Mr. Konoe and Sakamoto will not appreciate his presence or methods. But his eccentric methods have a way of dragging the truth out of situations where a more civilized approach would fail. Have you finished your job, Mashita? Yeah, can't tell you much about it, though, since I'm under NDA. And just when I thought I'd be able to relax for a bit. That hag, Yasuoka, asked me to help you out. She's a real slave driver. This man is different from the other mark bearers, which is saying a lot when you know what the other mark bearers are like. Because of his job, he's a seasoned veteran when it comes to cases involving dangerous and bizarre spirits. If he's offering a help, I'll jump on it. His help makes it that much more likely that Hero and the Departed's targets will survive. Sorry for causing you trouble. Save your thanks for the old bag, I'm just here to work. Yasuoka gave me a summary of the case. A spirit masquerading as a student, huh? Wonder how their grades are. He's cracking jokes, but his eyes show no trace of a smile. Under the surface, he must be just as tense as we are. You wanna know what I think? You're basically being jerked around by the Departed's notices. All those spirits from the notices, and you're still no closer to figuring out who the Departed is. Maybe you're right. But if I just ignore the notices, someone's going to die. Then what's your plan? You're just gonna keep dancing to their tune until you, they get bored and quit? That's... Don't get sidetracked and forget your original goal, Light. The only way you can solve this case is to find the departed hiding in this school. And what you should do is start looking at everyone around you as a potential suspect. By the way, Light... Mashina jerks his head over in the direction of the girl on the bed. Tell me about her already. How long are you going to make me wait? I share everything I've learned about Mr. Kokri and Hooligan and the events at the Shrine. So this kid attacked you? School violence is kind of a lost art these days. What a special moment in your teaching career, eh, Mr. Light? Cut it out with that. Hearing you say that makes my skin crawl. No matter how you choose to look at it, this kid isn't normal. She called us hooligans and had mushrooms growing along her neck. Right, considering that... Maybe she was possessed by Kukuri. I recall the time Michio was possessed by Slipmouth Kashima. She was fully under the control of the spirit, led by her desires. This student might have been the same as her. Who is this kid anyway? She doesn't have her suit and handbook, and no matter how much we shake her, she's not showing any signs of waking up. Waiting for her to wake up is such a waste of time, let's just ask someone else about her. Should be able to find someone who knows who she is pretty quickly, she's obviously trying to stand out. Let's ask around about the petri dish too while we're at it. Who knows, maybe we can learn who places this, thing, this inside the shrine. So we're just going to show that thing to the students. They're going to start talking about me. Too late to worry about your reputation. You already tricked two female students into breaking their curfew. I don't care if you get all chummy with those brats for the investigation, but... Better not do something weird that ends up blowing back onto me, Light. Give me a break, you two. I really hope this puts a stop to this topic. I'll have whoever I don't bring with me keeping an eye on the unconscious girl while I resume the investigation. 
Let's see if anyone at the school can tell me about this girl or the Petri dish. So Mashida has joined the group. In all seriousness, I was expecting Mashida to be like final chapter stuff. Just like he was for, uh, what was it, Little Red? That brat's still out cold. Just continue your investigation. I'll ring up Hero's phone if the kid wakes up. Seems like everyone has a phone but me. Did you find Kakuda? Yes, along with the new notice. So there's another new notice? Mind showing me? I showed Doryu the departed's notice. So they're threatening to kill someone again? And it's my job to prevent that from happening. If you've got any information that could help, please let me know. Sure. That reminds me, I've been wondering about this for a little bit now. I realized that you started calling Michio by her first name. Mind telling why? I had a feeling this would come up, actually. I tell Doryu about how Michio forced me to call her by her first name if I want her to cooperate. I figured... I couldn't imagine someone as serious as you just deciding to be so casual with their students. You bring up a good point. What do you think? Should I go back to calling her by her last name? No, don't do that. Michio will hate me. Why would she? Um, she's trying to get along with you in her own way, so I don't want to interfere with her wishes like that. Alright. I describe the girl who attacked me and ask if she knows her. I think I have an idea of who she is. It might be one of the first years, Saki Maruhashi. What's she like? I don't know her personally, but some of the first year council members are telling me some things. They said that she's never had any friends and is always on her own. She's got a bad rep because of it. There's nobody to defend her. There are all kinds of rumors surrounding her, saying she likes to go out at night, drink and smoke, and she's associated with a biker gang. These may just be rumors, but if they're true, that makes Saki Maruhashi a kid worthy of the name Hooligan. Sorry, I don't really know much about spirits. You should ask Micho instead. She's over on the second floor. Hooligan, huh? Compared to model and pianist, this one's got a lot more room for interpretation. Finding the target might not be so easy. I take out the creepy peach dish and show it to Dorio. What is that? A dead centipede and what are those red things? They're actually mushrooms. Do you know anything about this peachy dish? Not at all. I don't know anything at all about it. Mr. Light, can you please keep it away from me? Yeah, sorry about that. Doryu breathes a huge sigh of relief when I put the Petri dish back in my bag. Her reaction's totally normal. Hiro and I just become so desensitized to these sorts of creepy things that we forget how normal people view them. I finish my conversation with Doryu and leave the student council room. So we got a name, that was about it. So I didn't really mention it, but, uh... If you're not familiar with mycology, you may not know that for mushrooms, the caps are the reproductive structure, and the stuff that's underground is, or in the tree, or whatever it's growing on, is the actual body of the fungus, so to speak. So the red stuff that you're seeing is the actual body of the fungus, and it's not far enough in along in its life cycle to reproduce just yet, which is why it looks the way it does on that petri dish. And if you're wondering how I know that, I had to do some fungus work in my college years. I was thinking about insects. I feel kind of sorry for insectivores. And the pitcher plants are cool. So are the fly traps. So, what do you want to ask me? Don't pay attention to what Ms. Sakamoto said. He may not are your allies. 
Beware of the second floor corridor. That's where Mr. Kokery shows up. If you get too close, mushrooms start growing on your face. Hooligan. Can't think of anyone. Maybe Izumi, I guess, but he's dead already. I described the girl who attacked me and asked if she knows her. I think I've seen her before, but I don't know her name. I'm not a delinquent, after all. Could have fooled me. I take out the creepy peach dish and show it to Michiho. Ah, Chinese redhead. Calopendra subspinipes. Mutilins. So the mutilins would be the subspecies. Did you know? Even though the name centipede means 100 foot, there aren't many centipedes that actually have 100 feet. I think, like, only a few soil centipedes have that many feet. Same for millipedes. See, actually, I don't know if any millipedes have a full thousand legs, but I just mean that they don't have the number that the name implies. So, seizing the opportunity to talk about insects, Michio immediately begins flexing her knowledge about centipedes. She doesn't even have a reaction to the terrible sight inside the dish. I appreciate the centipede lesson, but what about the mushrooms? So these red thingies are mushrooms. No clue, it's beyond my scope of knowledge. I see, thanks. Judging by the reaction, Michio won't be able to tell us anything useful about the Petri dish. To see. I guess he's gonna give us more information about the girl because I doubt him to know more about fungus. <laughs> Hello, Mr. Light, do you still need anything from me? I've actually read that notice. A spirit named Kokori is going to kill Hooligan tonight, right? Well. Mr. Konoi told me not to discuss the incident with the students out of consideration for their mental well being. I can't just give him a dismissive reply, though. No need to hide it, the rumors have spread. Izumi, the pianist, and Horikoshi, the model, have been killed just as the notice said anyway. And the one who killed them was a spirit named The Departed, right? They're hiding in the school right now. If rumors of the incident have already spread to this extent, I'm not doing anyone any favors by keeping my mouth shut. I doubt that these rumors have been purposely spread by any one target. These students believe in The Departed, and they're connecting the dots and spreading the rumors on their own. The Uyghur students must be tired of living in fear. Guess they're scared of the idea that the person next to them might be The Departed. Are you not scared, Kakuta? Me? Scared? No way. If a spirit dare show itself to me, I'll just go to work with these fists. Because I don't really understand spirits. How about asking Kinukawa from Student Council? She seems to know a lot about that stuff. Hooligan. That's the person mentioned in the notice, right? Do you have any idea who it might be? If we're talking about hooligans at the school, I can only think of the delinquents. Those punks keep ignoring the school's rules and it's pissing me off. Kakuto's on the disciplinary committee, so it's not surprising that the behavior of some punks has got them all riled up. I described the girl who attacked me and asked if he knows her. Yeah, I know her. She always hangs out in the connecting corridor. She keeps going there even though I've warned her so many times. This is why I hate delinquents. They're stupid. Do you know anything else? Nothing in particular. I don't really care to know about delinquents. If she wasn't a girl, I would have punched her in the face. Eh, don't let that stop you. She had us coming. Hey now, aren't you in the karate club? Male or female, students shouldn't fight with each other. I'm just joking. Martial arts should be used to train your mind and body, not hurt others. I take the creepy petri dish from my bag and show it to Kakuda. What? The moment he sees the dish, his eyes bulge. What's wrong, Kakuda? No, it's just... My apologies, it's so disgusting, I don't even want to know what to say. Centipedes alone are already gross, but the mushrooms just make it so much worse. Where did you find it? The science room? No, it was inside the shrine in the second floor's connecting corridor. What was this thing doing in there? I have no idea either. Doubt it's a prank. Oh. I have to get back to patrolling. Sorry, but I've got to end our chat here. Kakuta bids us farewell and quickly leaves the classroom. Hey, Light. There's something weird with Kakuta's statement. Did you catch it? What's off about the statement? 
It's the mushrooms, of course. Ah, crap, I forgot to try the other ones first. Sorry, guys. When I first saw that petri dish, I didn't even realized they were mushrooms, but Kakuta noticed that right away. That's a bit strange. Exactly, for a sec there, I was worried that you might have missed it. I have a feeling he knows where those mushrooms came from. We better speak to Kakuta again. He should still be at school. Let's go find him. So let's just make a beeline for the corridor. Unless... Ah. I was hoping you could ask her, like, which way did he go? Yeah, I figured he would have, like, come here to investigate. It's possible he's at the library, but I'm thinking about just putting a break in the video and then coming back when we find him. It'll at least give me a chance to get something to drink. Okay, my uh, little break was short-lived. We're in the science room now. large shelf with a glass door. Flasks and vials are stored inside. They're clearly lab equipment used for class. I better not touch them. So ironically, I wonder if they can have an event... well... So just to explain, when I taught there was an event that uh, really scared a chemistry teacher. I don't know what happened, but one day she was in the chem lab and the glassware just started exploding. We don't know what caused it or anything. I wasn't actually there to see it myself. It's just, I guess like dominoes, they started going off. It'd be kind of cool if something like that actually happened here as a jump scare, but uh, ironically, fiction has a hard time keeping up with real life, especially these days. A large shelf with a glass door. Test tubes and tripods are stored inside. For some reason, there are a number of dead insects stuck on the door. Goodness gracious, I should store these more carefully. Mm -hmm. A pile of cases used for carrying equipment. I shake it lightly, but it doesn't seem like there's anything inside. Kakut is inside the storage room. Several documents are scattered on the floor below him. Looks as if the room has been ransacked. Mr. Light! I didn't do this! The room was already a mess when I came in! Please, you gotta believe me! Just tell me what happened here first, Kakuda. Yes. When I was patrolling the school, I saw someone coming out of the science room. They seemed kind of suspicious, so I decided to check it out. The room looked the same as it always does, but I unlocked the storage room here and have a look just in case. That's when I found this mess. And that's what you're saying happened. Yes, that's what really happened. Damn, I could have caught the culprit if I'd just come in sooner. Kakuda's eyes dart every which way as if he's trying to spin as he's trying to spin his tail. My gut tells me that he's hiding something. Let's press him for details. You saw someone coming out of the room, right? What'd they look like? A delinquent boy with brown hair. He was running at full speed, so I couldn't get a good look at his face. Why didn't you chase him? I didn't know what I should do. At that time, I had no idea he'd been poking around in the storage room. Is anything missing from the science room? I don't think so. But I'm not totally sure since I don't often come here. My apologies. Did you check if there were any shadows? Someone might be hiding in there. I checked over the room, but I didn't notice anything out of the ordinary. That's why I decided to enter the storage room. The storage room was locked, right? Yes, so I unlocked it. Since I'm on patrol, I have the keys with me. Is it easy to borrow the keys? Not at all. Who knows what those things would do if they had these keys? Only trustworthy students like me, some on the disciplinary committee, would be able to borrow the keys. 
That's all I need to hear from Kakuda. Of the three pieces of information he gave me, two of them are inconsistent. He may give himself away if we point it out. Let's put his feet to the fire, shall we? So, the delinquent is the most important part, I think, because... Where would he run to? Uh, we've only... Like, it's probably a fire hazard that there's only one staircase up and down. You said you saw a delinquent student, right? Yes, that's right. You said it was locked when you came in, which means the perpetrator locked it behind himself. But you also said the key is under tight control and that it'd never be lent out to untrustworthy delinquent students. Just wondering if you could explain that for me. Um, he must have stolen the spare key. Those delinquents, they have no shame. What else is this guy capable of? Well, I suppose we can always go check if the spare key's been stolen or not. Except I've got an alternate theory. Kakuta, you broke into the room using the key you're holding. I have no idea why you did that, but... You started acting weird after I showed this to you. Do you know anything about these mushrooms? I don't really know the details. I was just told to do this. By who? That's... The sound of a phone vibrating echoes in the room. Kakuda takes out his phone. He then stares at the screen, his eyes wide with intense concentration. Oh. I was summoned. I have to go. Or else, I'll be killed. Killed? Who told you they're gonna kill you? Mmm. Kakuto runs out of the storage room, screaming at the top of his lungs. Wait. I dash after Kakuto with Hiro following hot on my heels. When I saw him running away like that, my mind immediately flashed back to Naomi Horikishi who ran away from us right before she met a tragic fate. I'm determined to prevent history from repeating itself. But... My stamina fails me midway through the chase, and Kakuda disappears into the distance. Damn, that kid's in peak condition. He didn't even slow down for a moment, is he even human? I agree with Hiro. His physical prowess certainly seems like it's beyond that of a typical high school student. Almost as if he's being possessed by a spirit. Guess we just go back to the science room and inspect what he left behind. Yeah. We return to the science room's storage room. My whole body feels as heavy as lead, both physically from fatigue and mentally from the looming sense of powerlessness. I'm starting to feel like I'm prey stuck in a spider's web, struggling pointlessly while the departed exerts total control over me. Does this struggle have any purpose? Can I even save a single person? Come on, not that frown again. I get what you're feeling, but set it aside and cope with it later. We still have some time before night comes. Let's do what we need to do. I know. Hero is right. We need to act, not mope. Let's inspect the storage room. We need to figure out why Kakuda broke into this place. Hmm. There's a large spiral shell fossil inside the shelf. Is this an ammonite? Its distinctive shape looks pretty artistic for something natural. Kakuto was rummaging through the shelf until a bit ago. The door is wide open, the documents are all scattered. Hmm. This is a fine stuffed bear. It's not uncommon for students to have stuffed animals, but a stuffed bear? That's unusual. I've never seen a... S like, I never went to a school that had something like that. I never taught at one. <laughs> this is a first. I'm drawn to it. I see something glowing in its mouth. I put my hand in the mouth, though I can't fit it all the way inside. What are you doing, Light? There's something inside, but my hands are too big to fit all the way in. Do you want me to give it a try, then? 
I didn't mean it that way, but would you mind trying it for me? To be honest, I don't really want to do it since it looks like there will be weird bugs in there, but I guess I have no choice, huh? Now being a lab, you should be able to get like nitrile gloves or something to use. Hiro timidly puts her hand into the bear's mouth with a gloomy expression on her face. Just a little bit more. Got it. Here you go. Hiro hands me an eerie tooth. So just think, Hiro came from Miss Zoo and is now ripping teeth out of bear's mouths. What a difference she makes when she can keep her clothes on, what can I say? There are several documents on the floor. This must be Kakuda's doing. I pick up one of the documents and look at the cover. There is a label with a caption written on it. Research on native plants that grow around Konehara Academy. There are two dates written under the title. One from 11 years ago and another from 9 years ago. Did this research span two years? I find a preface on the next page. The fox forest behind the school seems to have a special environment. A variety of plants native to this area can be found can be seen here. As a science teacher at Konehara Academy, I set out to catalog all of them. So, based on the name of the forest, apparently Hideo Kojima was around. Following the preface page, there's a summary of the research done on various plants. There are photos of plants and moss, complete with detailed research information. It's thorough, yet a surprisingly easy read. It's clear that the author is both a fine writer and educator. What in the... The page between Fox Azalea and Foxtail Fern has been torn out. Oh yeah, Kojima went nuts here, man. I skim through to the end, but I don't find anything about the red mushrooms. Maybe what you're looking for is on the torn page. Most likely. Kakuda must have done this. I bet it's why he snuck in here. Why would he do that, though? If he got caught, he'd be expelled. So you're saying that mushroom data would have to be worth that risk for him? I guess he thought it was. I can't even imagine what information would be that important, though. If we can find that lost page, we may get a step closer to understanding Kakuda's motives. Should we report this to the school light? No, we shouldn't. We'd back Kakuda in a corner if we did. We can always decide to turn him in later once we've heard his side of the story. And they were missing the in that line, just said his side of the story. And I can actually pull it up to show you. So the second to last word there should be the, not of. It's a little disappointing this thing has so many fewer typos than NIS stuff. Just saying. Mr. Light, finally! Ave showed up earlier and left me a message. Seekers of wisdom, I shall await you in the Garden of Knowledge. What does that even mean? Don't ask me, I got no clue either. Well, that's all. See you later. Well, we had to go to the library anyway, so may as well visit him, I guess. Having finished her business with us, Michio strolls off. Nani? Brat's still out cold. Just continue your investigation. I'll ring up Hero's phone if the kid wakes up. There's no one inside the library. Or so I thought. After a beat, a boy suddenly emerges from behind the bookshelves. Welcome to the Garden of Knowledge, Mr. Light. Seeing that you're here, that must mean you're in need of assistance from the Sage, a.k.a. me. You're the one who called me here. Goodness, so you haven't realized it yet. My left eye said you wanted my wisdom. Hence why I told you where I was in advance. Consider this my being generous and proactively providing you service. I can't follow his line of thinking at all. One thing for certain, he's being nice to me today. Maybe he's in a good mood or something. 
This is a good chance to get some information out of him. Let's play along. I didn't realize that your clairvoyance let you see so far ahead. You really are incredible. Just as you mentioned, there was something I wanted to ask you. That's right, ask away, I'm listening. You seem to be in a good mood today. What's got you feeling so upbeat? What fine perception. I expected no less from the one and only spirit doctor. I will be meeting my mentor for the first time in a while today. Oh god, the old bag's coming here. So they're the reason you turned out this way. I mean, are they the person who got you interested in paranormal phenomena? Correct, my great master taught me the truth of the world. They may be the man I am today. They're the reason why Abe has developed such an interesting personality. They just warped his mind, completely ruined a kid's life. You hate to see it. I thought his teacher was Yasuoka, to be honest with you. Please wait, Mr. Light. I shall share information regarding the departed case on one condition. That condition being, you must complete my trial. What trial? I want to see your true abilities as a spirit doctor. Be it your spiritual state or power, show me everything. I'm busy with my investigation, though. Well, it'll take but a moment of your time. Are you ready? Now allow me to explain the trial. I have three talismans with me. Take them and get a good look. Obtain the talismans. Each talisman has a symbol on it. A triangle, square, or star. I'm going to envision one symbol in my head. I'm sure you already know what you should do, right? You merely need to read my mind with your supernatural powers. And state the symbol I'm picturing. The heck? Did you hit your head or something? The prowling to outsiders is not necessary for this trial. This is my trial for Mr. Light. But I'm not a psychic, let alone someone's supernatural powers. Humbling yourself, I see. I have selected a symbol. Now demonstrate your powers to me. Abe starts mumbling something as if he's meditating. Seriously? Seiman is what they call a pentagram in divination, which would be star. But he might be trying to throw me off, and the correct answer could be either triangle or square. Do I need to give a correct answer, though? <laughs> I chose the star talisman and tried to show it to Abe. His name alone would have made me try star first. This is the symbol you're picturing, Abe. I present the star talisman to Abe. <laughs> How unseemly. Did you give the wrong answer on purpose to test me? Let me give you another chance. What's the matter with me? I mean, there's a chance Abe isn't picturing any symbol in his mind. If that's a possibility, there's no point in me taking this battle seriously. I pick up the petri dish, open the lid, and try to show Abe the contents. The hideous centipede can be seen clearly from the moment I open the lid. Now that I think about it, Abe really hates bugs. Playtime is over, Abe. Get a look at this. I present the petri dish to Abe, making sure the centipede inside is impossible to ignore. Centipede! Get it away from me, please! Are you going to give me your information, then? That's unfair, Mr. Light. This is your punishment for disrespecting adults and wasting our time, you brat. What are you going to do now? Fine, I lose. Get that petri dish away from me now. So yeah, I was... I kind of wanted to do that as a joke, but once again, it turns out to be the right answer. I've learned a lot. So this is how you exterminate spirits. You observe them and strike at their weaknesses. How incredible, Spirit Doctor. I fulfilled my end of the bargain, Abe. Time for you to spill everything you know. Understood. I let him know that a new notice has arrived and ask him about Mr. Kokiri. So this time it's Mr. Kokiri, huh? I know him, obviously. A spirit that haunts the shrine in the second floor's connecting corridor as well as the Fox Forest, is it not? Forest? That's news to me. 
Goodness me, the Spirit Doctor didn't even know that trivial bit of information? I guess you leave me no choice. Allow me to tell you the rumors I have learned. This was a well-known rumor that spread around ten years ago. There's an old shrine gate in the north corner of the school grounds. Beyond the gate lies a path leading to the forest. It's said he appears there at night. A man clad in white garb and a fox mask. He is Mr. Kokiri. He was dubbed Kokiri because of the mask. As I'm sure you know, the ritual used to speak with the dead Kokiri summons a part fox spirit. I believe he was given the name by someone who knew he was a fox spirit. It said Mr. Kokiri used to be a priest of the shrine in the forest. In his past life, he patrolled the path and performed ritual cleansings to keep the shrine free of negative energy. He continues this routine even after death. He will never forgive anyone who disgraces the shrine, should he find one. He will shoot that scoundrel right in the head. That is the Mr. Kokiri I know. So, as much as I hate to say it, out of all three games, this is the first spirit that I actually respect. Hopefully it just doesn't disgrace itself from here. Thank you for allowing me to impart my wisdom. That's different from the rumor I heard. There are two rumors of Mr. Kokiri, after all. The Fox Forest rumor predates the one about the second floor shrine. Perhaps the details have changed over time through the retelling of the rumor, which is what I'm afraid of. Or... What if both rumors are actually true and none of the details have been changed at all? What if Mr. Kokiri actually shows up both in the forest and the corridor? Interesting. Unfortunately, the Mr. Kokiri of the corridor is completely different from the one in the forest in terms of the period, place, and the curses they wield. Do you still think they are the same? That would mean there are two spirits with the name Mr. Kokiri. It's just like the twin switching trick in those old detective stories. The spirit doctor's creative power is truly something to behold. What do you think, Abe? I have no idea. A definitive conclusion would require more information. Should we assume both rumors are true, though, that would mean the two spirits are connected. Is there anything that leads you to that conclusion? More or less. The priest that became Mr. Kokiri is said to have traveled the forest path in his past life. That path connected two shrines. The first one is the Shrine in the Forest, and the other one is... Kokiri Shrine on the second floor. You see, that shrine was originally on the ground. Kokiri appears in both shrines because they're connected. Is that what you think? Precisely. Two shrines and two rumors related to Kokiri. What could this mean? Hooligan, huh? Person who's a far cry from the upsetting citizen I am. I have the faintest idea who that might be. I describe the girl who attacked me and ask if he knows her. I am not familiar with such an individual. My left eye refuses to even see those of low spiritual state. I take the creepy petri dish and show it to Abe. Stop it! It's too much! I quickly return the petri dish to my bag in light of Abe's feelings. After I finish talking with Abe, I leave the library. She's awake, eh? Hero's phone is vibrating. Excuse me for a moment. Hero answers the phone and begins to speak. Judging from the parts of the conversation I can hear, it seems like Mashkita's on the other side, other end of the call. Mashkita said the girls were gaining consciousness. Or in his words, I didn't come here to deal with brats. Get your asses back here now. Shall we head to the infirmary? It's almost time for the students to leave school anyway. Can I leave the talking to you, Light? You're the faculty member here, after all. I'm not super confident, but I'll give it a shot. I find the delinquent girl mush to glaring at each other when I arrive in the infirmary. About damn time he got back here. Told this brat what happened, though I'm not sure if he actually understood anything. Seeing as how she hasn't spoken a damn word. Do something about it, Light. 
So this situation falls to me. Once I'm all ready, I should talk to the delinquent girl. I think they went up and crossed, but I don't remember. Uh. After taking a deep breath and organizing my thoughts, I approached the girl and talked to her. Glad to see you've regained consciousness. Your name's Saki Maruhashi, right? The name's Light. I'm a temporary teacher here. Have you heard anything about me? I'm currently investigating the Departed case. How do I put this? Do you remember attacking me with a baton? This isn't going well. She's not answering at all. Well, let's waterboard her. A chime sound signaling the closing of school for the day. I'm going. Maruhashi starts walking toward the exit. Wait. There's something I want to ask you. At that moment, someone else enters the infirmary. I told you the old bag was on her way out here. Good afternoon. It sure is quite lively here, isn't it? Yasuoka. My, it's been a while since we last saw each other. The beguiling, kimono-clad woman is Tawako Yasuoka. She's another Mark Baron, also a renowned fortune teller. She's also quite famous as a spiritualist and has helped me a lot. The sacred objects Moe brought to the school are actually hers. What brings you here? Well, I'm here to help you out, obviously. Daimon and Moe have been keeping me informed by your case. I see you've gone and gotten yourself wrapped up in another terrifying incident. And knowing you, I suppose the wheels of fate must be turning once again. None can escape the fate they were born with. I'm curious to see what twists and turns that strange fate of yours will take you down. Perhaps Yasuoka's age has given her this philosophical perspective on life. However, she's certainly not cold-hearted. If she were, she wouldn't bother lending a hand to people who face a daunting fate. By the way, who is this girl? Maruhashi stares at Yasuoka. This is a far different look than the glare she directed at us earlier. There's not a trace of her prior hostility. Um... You're Tawako Yasuoka, aren't you? You're on OMG Paranormal Experience. Yes, that is I. Are you serious? A legendary celeb is here? Shit, 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 I'm like super nervous now. What's with that 180? Maruhashi went from ice cold to totally excited. She seems overjoyed to meet someone that she's seen on television. Your raw energy is out of this world, Miss Yasuoka. You're so freaking refreshing. My, my, thank you, dear. You are also very beautiful. That hair color suits you well. You think so? Miss Yasuoka, can I get your autograph? After that, I asked Yasuoka to help me persuade Maruhashi to talk. Because of that, she reluctantly agrees to cooperate with us. I'm only doing this because Miss Yasuoka asked me. I don't like you. Don't worry, kid. I don't like you either. So what do you want to know? You want to get to know me? Saki Maruhashi from 1B. My favorite subjects are math and art. Liar. My favorite food is sweet red bean buns, and I love looking at motorcycles. Liar. Just looking at them, not riding. Yeah, I don't have a license. I really love the plating and gold glitter paint on vintage motorcycles. My cousin's the leader of a bike gang. He's got this red chicken on the collar of his bike, and it looks so cool. Once Maruhashi starts excitedly talking about motorcycle de detailing, she looks like any other enthusiastic kid. I've heard that you're often hanging out by yourself. I can't help that, you know. There's no one in the school that I can talk to about art. And I get bored talking with them about other stuff. Do you know anything about Mr. Kokiri? Nope, never heard of him before. Who is he anyway? It's a pretty strange name. He's a spirit that haunts the second floor corridor. Are you for real? I would never have gone there if I had known. It's stupid to mess around with spirits. Does that spirit show up from the shrine? It's also said he appears in the Fox Forest. Not the Fox Forest. That place sure is bad news, huh? I've heard weird stories about it. What kind of stories? Are they about spirits, or...? 
Not those kinds of stories. I heard punks used to sneak into the forest a long time ago. I don't know if it's real or not, but apparently some of them never come back. Punks in the forest at night, huh? What a strange combination. Don't ask me why, I've got no idea. But none of the students here ever go near that forest because of the rumor. I don't remember. It's like there's a blank spot in my memory or some shit. How much do you remember, then? I remember going to the corridor after school. I know that place is, like, off-limits, but... I like hanging out there, you know? It's empty and the wind feels real nice. I was just spacing out while looking at the sky. But then I got this strange feeling. I got goosebumps. I started freaking out. And it all came from that shrine. So I approached it. And I opened the door. I found a disgusting petri dish inside. I thought it was just a horrible prank. So I went to grab it. And my memory got wiped after that. I don't even remember attacking you or being carried to the infirmary or anything. That's all. So you're not the one that put that dish there? Of course not. My gramps is the chief priest of Kentucky Shrine. Ever since I was a kid, I had a fear of the gods drilled into my skull. And you think I'd do such, a bl such blasphemous shit? Hell no. Seeing how pale her face is, I don't think she's lying. Who put the petri dish there, then? I've asked her everything I can think of. Is Saki Maruhashi really the hooligan that Mr. Kokuri is targeting? I share my doubts with the Mark Bears and ask for their opinion. I don't know. Neither the law of matter conservation nor Euclidean geometry apply to spiritual beings, so it's not like you can apply logic here. I don't know about her being the target hooligan, but she's definitely a delinquent. I'm thinking the same thing. Hey, old hag, the spiritual stuff is kind of your whole thing, no? Give us your take. Let's see. Maruhashi doesn't strike me as a malicious person. And if she were truly the target, she should have been slain in front of the shrine. Instead, the spirit only chose to drive her mad. In my opinion, I'm doubtful that she's your hooligan. Well, who is hooligan, then? Even after discussing the matter further, we failed to arrive at a convincing answer to this mystery. That means we're still lacking information. We have no choice but to keep investigating the subject. Which means that our next destination will be the place Abe mentioned earlier. The Fox Forest behind the school. A few days after the incident at the clock tower, Nunos arrived. This time the murderer is a spirit named Kokuri and the target is Hooligan. A rumor is also circulating about Mr. Kokuri. They say he's the spirit of a priest that haunts the corridor shrine and punishes delinquents. Rumor has it hooligans who desecrate the shrine will be cursed by Mr. K Kokuri, and mushrooms will grow on their faces. When we went to investigate, we were attacked by a victim of the curse, a student named Maruhashi. She fits the description of a hooligan, but is she the target? We managed to get information on Mr. Kokuri, a spirit who haunts the fox forest behind the school through a student named Abe. The two Mr. Kokuri rumors are different, but they share one aspect, a male priest. But are they really targeting Maruhashi? If not, then who is Hooligan? By the time we finish our discussion, the sun is pretty much set. The night phase of our investigation is about to begin. Either Hiro or Mashita will accompany me for the night, the other will stay here. I'll be managing the sacred objects in Moe's stead tonight. Come to me whenever you've gathered enough lost souls. You're going to help us out, Mont Yasuoka. Of course. I have far more knowledge about the spirit world than you lot. I should be able to use that knowledge to assist you somehow. Experience is the best teacher, after all. It's dangerous, though. I appreciate your concern. But I've already lived a long, full life. I don't really value my life as much as I used to. I'd rather not see anyone younger than me die, though. So please allow me to be of service, Light. Alright. Seeing that we are dealing with spirits here, I'm grateful to have an expert with us. Still, I can't have her walking around the forest in that beautiful kimono. I'll just have her stay here. 
You'd better stay here too, Marahashi. At least until we get a clear answer who Hooligan is. Sure, I don't mind. I can just ask Mr. Yakutsuoka to give me life advice. Life advice? You're too young for that. Everyone has their own problems, you know? It doesn't matter how old they are. Even my own grandchild. Is Abe her grandchild? And just like that, the three women quickly became immersed in their chit-chat. As I look at them... Hey. Mashita approaches me. Take this, Light. He hands over a paper bag. There's something heavy inside. A gun? I run my fingers along the paper bag. Seems to be made of metal and has a rectangular section leading to a more rounded section. Mashita, this is... Lower your voice, idiot. Do you want the others to find out? But I don't know how to use one of these. Relax, this one doesn't have a safety. Just aim and pull the trigger. Still, because it doesn't have a safety, be very careful with it and don't cause it to go off by accident. Don't give me this kind of th don't give this kind of thing to civilians. It's for your own safety. We have no idea what we could be dealing with, and if something happens to me, you'll be glad you have it. Don't hesitate to use it when needed, you hear me? Okay. <laughs> What are you two doing? Nothing. If we're all set, then let's get on with this investigation. The Fox Force is located in the northern corridor of the school, just beyond the Shrine Gate. To get to the Shrine Gate, take the road in front of the clock tower. I hope we find something. Maybe Kakudo will be there. We haven't seen him since he ran off. We have no idea where he went, though. Sorry to say, but there's nothing we can do about it. I recall Kakudo's parting words to us. I was summoned. I have to go, or else I'll be killed. Mk. Who called Kakuda, and for what reason? By the way, Light. Hey, isn't Nakamatsu at Kujo Mansion? Why don't you give him a call? Eita may be able to research the background details of this case on the internet. Well, I'm still not sure I should involve him in this. We're in dire need of information now. If I have any other questions, I should call him. So, Saki and Tawako have been added. Nobody knows what may come, and that's especially true when we're walking around the forest at night. We can't know what lies ahead, so don't forget to restore your spirit. I pick up the phone in the infirmary and punch in the mansion's number. Nakamatsu here. It's me, Light. I need you to look up a few things for me. Sure, alright. Tell me what you need me to find. I share details of the incident to Eita. You just keep running to spirits one after the other, huh? There's way too much evil stuff terrorizing that school, man. If I was enrolled there, I would have just taken off running and never looked back. So what do you want to ask? Thanks for this afternoon, Light. What are you talking about? Damn, you forgot already? You helped me cheer Suzu up. Oh, yeah, back at the hospital. I only did that because you encouraged me. Nah, you mean a lot to her, you know? She really believes in you. Everyone really depends on you. I'm jealous. It's no big deal. Come on, no need to be so humble, man. Makes me wonder if I'll be as impressive as you are when I reach your age. I wonder. It all depends on your effort level, I guess. Do your best. You've still got plenty of time to become the man you want. Yeah, I'll give my best shot. Mr. Kokery, never heard of him. I knew it, no hits. Maybe he's a minor spirit that's only known at Konohara Academy. You're a lot of help, Ada. A lot of hooligans show up when I search. Can you try and narrow it down a bit? Like, give me a first or last name or something? Who in the world is hooligan? Oh, we still don't have confirmation, we do have a suspect. Find me any information about Shinichi Kakuda. Shinichi Kakuda from Konehara Academy, huh? You got it. That Kakuda kid seems to be famous in the karate world. He performed well in several tournaments and has a promising future. Man, I'm getting kind of jealous. Well, there's a post that caught my attention. What post? It's a comment thread on the article. 
With the obvious caveat of never trusting any unsourced comma you can find on the internet, this cockatoo kid supposedly punched a student from another school and injured them. That'd be a clear-cut case of criminal assault. The thread continues on. Despite that incident, he still took part in a tournament afterward. He should have at least gotten house arrest if something like that was true. Wonder what's going on. Not suspicious. Rumors say his senior, Konohara alumnus, covered up the incident. And this could be the correct use of alumnus. We don't know the gender exactly. If that's true, Kakuda's probably pretty indebted to him. If these rumors about Kakuda are true, the fine, upstanding student on the disciplinary committee actually has two faces. How would that be related to this case, though? Red mushrooms going out of a dead centipede. Just saying that makes me feel gross. Glad I don't have to see the real thing. Talk to you later. That reminds me, I brought new sacred objects. Man, inflation, I tell ya. So we need a total of 12 souls, but there's only 7 left. So we can only get 3 items, and then we, uh... Yeah. Oh well. I shall see you later, then.